Hey everybody, welcome back to Word Balloon. It's John Suntress. A couple show notes before we get started. I talked a little bit about it on a couple of the intros of the current shows, but uh, really, during this tough time, I'm going to do my best to uh, provide as much entertainment as possible as we all get through this. I mean, I'm going to be doing a lot more video and a lot more interviews, so uh, I'm, I'm on lockdown just like everybody else as far as work goes, and uh, I want to uh, entertain you as best as I can and help us uh, pass the time and get through this tough time. So uh, if you have any questions or comments about the show, please reach me via email, john at warballoon.com. Uh, you can follow me on uh, Facebook under my name, John Suntress. I've added a Word Balloon video page called Word Balloon Live. I hope you'll check it out. Uh, a lot of the same uh, stuff that I've been putting up on YouTube will be there. I'm going to be doing some live streaming as well in the days and weeks ahead to, again, uh, entertain us and kind of uh, keep us, uh, you know, occupied. But uh, thanks a lot for listening through the commercials. There might be one more before the show starts. But as always, thank you for listening and for your attention. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Word Balloon, the comic book conversation show. John Suntress here. Elsa Chartier joins us today on Word Balloon for a really interesting talk. Now, Elsa, of course, is working with Matt Fraction on the November uh, miniseries. It's a series of graphic novels. It was going to be three volumes, but Elsa tells us uh, it's going to be four now. Uh, volume four is coming out in, uh, I believe, May or June. I forget now. It's in the conversation. But uh, we talk about uh, Elsa's process. Um, it's a pretty interesting story how she got into uh, drawing comic books. It's not your conventional story. But I think she has a lot of great tips for uh, aspiring artists and uh, how to break in. And her story is very fascinating. Uh, she talks about her uh, friendships with uh, Matt and Kelly Sue, but also talks about uh, working with George R. Martin and uh, other collaborations as well. Really interesting conversation, and I always appreciate the international perspective. So uh, I hope you're entertained by this conversation with Elsa Chartier on today's Word Balloon. All brought to you by the League of Word Balloon listeners. Thank you greatly, League, for your support, especially uh, during the zombie apocalypse that we're all facing right now. Uh, hang in there, everybody. Word Balloon is free. It'll always be free. But if you can swing it and want to help out the cause and subscribe to Word Balloon, you can go to patreon.com slash Word Balloon or click on the Patreon ad on the front page of wordballoon.com. But thank you greatly for your support. I mean it, Word Balloon listeners. This episode of Word Balloon brought to you by Aftershock Comics. Here to entertain you through these trying times and shaking things up with upcoming new titles like Stephanie Phillips' Artemis and the Assassins. I'm actually going to talk to her this week. We'll be probably putting that uh, episode out next week. There's also John Layman's The Man Who Effed Up Time, Zach Thompson's Undone by Blood, God Killers by Mark Sable. They are going to go along inside the uh, Aftershock uh, comic shelf with uh, favorites like Baby Teeth with Donnie Cates and Gary Brown and Animosity from Marguerite Bennett and Raphael De La Tour. Uh, also a walk through hell from Garthenis and Gordon Sazutska. This uh, these books also uh, you know sit on the shelf with works from Paul Jenkins and Tim Seeley and Cullen Bunn, Phil Hester, so many more of my good friends that make great comics and they're doing it for Aftershock. Go to their website. You'll find full story descriptions, preview art pages, and how to get these stories digitally or the diamond codes through your local shop at Aftershock Comics. Dot com. All right, let's get into it now. A great conversation with uh, a really very uh, interesting person, and it's a, a pleasure meeting her and uh, getting to know her a little bit. I look forward to future conversations with Elsa Chartier, but here's the first one on Word Balloon. Elsa Chartier, welcome to Word Balloon. As I was just telling you before we started recording, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having me on your show. Congratulations. It's a beautiful book, and this is the first time I've seen your art. But uh, I love the collaboration with Matt. And, um, you know, um, it's different in a great way from a lot of uh, traditional comic books that we see here in America. And uh, but really, it, it fits the story beautifully. And I think it gives it a real romantic feel. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you. I, I appreciate you uh, saying it. It's different because that's what we went for. Uh, sure. We want yeah, we wanted to do something that we had never done before, neither Matt or or, or me. Mm -hmm. uh, so the fact that it came out different is already good for me. <laughs> is this style different from other works that you've done in the past as far as the art? Yes. Um it's a it's more greedy. A bit more, less clean. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to, I'm heavily influenced by animation and my style used to be very, very clean lines. Okay. Um, but um, I wanted to go towards something that maybe was closer to my influences right now, which mm-hmm. are less um, less clean and a bit more sketchy. Uh, although I'm not still 100% sketchy because I I um, I like tight lines. Okay. So I'm, yes. I guess I'm queen. Say it one more time. I, I, I spoke over you and I think I didn't hear you properly. Repeat yourself if you could, please. It's uh, I'm I'm in between. I'm I'm less clean than I was before, less okay. conservative, if you will. But I'm not as sketchy as some artists that I love are. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I think it's it's um it's different. It's um an evolution for me mm-hmm. and one that fit the story better, but also is reflects where I would like my art to go. Interesting. Um, when, uh, when did, when did you start reading comic books? Um, I started reading comic books after I started drawing them. <laughs> Interesting. Is weird. Uh, but, um, I think six years ago, six or seven years ago, I started uh, reading comics. Uh, okay. Around that time, yes. So, were you planning when you started your art? Where did you think your art would? Uh, what kind of format did you think your art would, uh, you know, take you? Um, so the thing is, I I got a chance to start drawing comics because my partner back then, oh, still now, but back then he he had an opportunity to show his work to Charlie Adler the uh, the walking dead the walking dead artist yes and uh, yeah but he didn't have an artist to draw his pitch uh, and so he asked me if i wanted to draw it but i was not an artist back then and uh, i was a bit of a uh, kind of lost i used to i used to be an actress but i kind of i had quit that and didn't really know what to do you know, wow. and so he asked me and I put together five pages in a couple of weeks, which were terrible, but <laughs> it was my introduction to, to comics. And I started reading comics after that. Uh, and I liked it. And I thought, huh, this could be, this could be a career. I like that. And so <laughs> that, that's how it happened. That's great. Um, Man, that's that's really interesting and very different from from I think other artists that I've spoken to in the past. Uh, because how do you think you how did you learn um, eventually your storytelling? Are there specific artists that you looked at and were able to break down? You know the the things you need to uh, to tell a story in, in comic book form. Mm, so I I read the Scott McCloud's books. Sure. Yes. Understanding, Understanding comics. comics. Which yes. Are um, the absolute perfect uh, way to explain comics to someone. Okay. Uh, so I think after you've read that one, you've pretty much covered the basics and the, the a lot of what is necessary to know. But um, after that, I didn't. I guess I did that for a while after. Uh, more recently, but at first I didn't di- I didn't really dissect comics to understand how it worked. Okay. I just read, read, and little by little, you know, you pick up on stuff, and some of it it's, it's instinctive, and some of it is more conscious. Uh, but I guess I just um, try to understand the medium, and I and I understand it by reading books, reading good books. Um, so yeah, like a lot of things, you, you, um, expose yourself to good material. And then if you get a chance to put that into practice, which is the crucial part, um, and, and you get to make mistakes and understand and look back at your own work and, and see, oh, okay, this is not so good. I should maybe try that different on my next book. Uh, I, I learned like a lot of artists, I learned by you know, doing. Sure. 
Absolutely. Repetition. I, yeah. I do understand. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, and, and by the way, I always appreciate uh, people who are born in a, a non-English speaking country and are able to articulate their thoughts in English. Because if I were to try to do this in French or I'm, I'm of Greek descent and mm. I could not carry on this conversation in a second language the way you're doing right now. So I, I, I appreciate that. And your thoughts are clear and very easy to understand. And also, I think a lot of artists that are hearing this are going to, you know, if they haven't already picked up uh, Understanding Comics, Scott McCloud's book, I, I know they're going to do it. Um, that's great. Oh, yeah, that's definitely the one thing that I tell artists. Okay, what, what, how should, what should I read? How do I learn? To, you need this one book. <laughs> you I <understand>. absolutely <laughs> need it. <laughs> I've seen Scott speak uh, at uh, lectures live and uh, in person. Wow. And yeah, he's oh no, he's great. Yeah, he's he's terrific. I, I met him at a show uh, in Shrewsbury. Uh, about a year ago he was nice really nice i didn't get to saw him teach but i spoke to him which was very nice that's that's terrific so uh tell me about um other uh you know graphic novels or comic books that you've written in the past to get to this point with november um so before november i did a few stuff i started out with uh the infinite loop which was um my partner Pierrick Collinet and I's uh first comic books the one that allowed us to uh break into comics or you know at least be published and and, and be professional uh <laughs> creators sure so that was published by IDW in 2015 i think okay Okay. So I did that, and then after after I uh, got very very lucky and got to draw a graphic novel for uh, written uh, by Lisa Tuttle and George Martin. Um, so the creator of uh, Game of Thrones, he, yes, he yes. found my stuff, he found my stuff online, and he asked me to draw his book, which was <laughs> kind of insane at the time. Um, yeah, what an honor! That's terrific! Wow. Yeah, you know. Um, the editor. It was my first Comic Con. Um, the one San Diego. That I went, San Diego, no, or was uh, it someplace York, else? New York. Oh, New York. Sure. Yes. Uh, it was the first show that I ever did, and uh, it was right when we were trying to find a publisher for the Infinite Loop. And so I I went and I spoke to probably everyone on the floor, and uh, <laughs> this editor comes to our booth and and tells me George Martin would you would you like to draw a book um, for George Martin and it was so ridiculous I I hadn't I hadn't been published yet and I thought that someone was playing a really cruel joke <laughs> and because that was more you know possible probable than than it actually be a thing. And so I sure. didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell a single soul until after I got the contract. And then I realized, oh, that's for real. Um, so, yeah, uh, my first Comic-Con was uh, eventful. Wow. Had you been reading George or other, you know, um, fantasy writers? No, no, no not at all. Uh, Interesting. I have since, yes. Uh, but at that time, not at all. So okay. I did that graphic novel, and then I did a few work, uh, a few things for DC and Marvel for a few years. Oh, what, have you, what have you? It was great. I got to that? work. Yeah, I got to work with uh, Jimmy Palmiotti, 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 sorry, and yes. Amanda for the Starfire run. Um, I did a few other stuff for DC. I did the Wasp for Marvel. Oh, sure. Um, who drew yeah. your Wasp or who wrote your Wasp story? Was it J- Jeremy Whitley or? Yes. Oh, yeah. very good. Sure. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. That's excellent. No, that's a great book. Terrific. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that's true. And, you know, it's funny. I'll be speaking. I'm doing a Comic-Con in, in Chicago this weekend, and I'll be speaking with uh, – I'm, I'm moderating a panel with uh, Jimmy and Amanda. Oh, they're yeah. sweethearts. That's great. Did Jimmy, you know, a lot of times Jimmy will be paired with an artist 
Um, and certainly you had a couple things before, you know, you like you had the infinite look that you had already published. But did he help you with your storytelling in any way? No, no, no. OK, um, OK. Uh, I had some great notes, though, from the editor uh, who was um, Paul Kaminsky. Yes. He got me he, he, a few pointers um, that were very helpful. And then I carry with me to this day that I try to apply as much as possible. Uh, but by then, I was comfortable enough to not need, you know, um, too much help. If you, okay. If you will. Sure. What um, I'm, I'm always interested in what people read or what movies or television they watch. What kind of uh, story genres do you enjoy? I'm not fixated, especially on genres. Uh, okay. I I do put a lot of uh, value in, in story. Um, um, and uh, so for book, for instance, I've been reading a lot of plays recently. Uh, okay. Re-read. I'm a big fan of Mamet's work. Sure. Yes. Um, He's from my city. He's from Chicago. Yes, yeah. I know. <laughs> so I've been aware of it for a long time when I was a teenager uh sexual perversity in Chicago which became mm-hmm. for the for my listeners if they don't know the play became the films uh, about last night. So I I've I've been a Mammoth fan as well for a very long time. Yeah, so um I've read I've been reading a lot of that uh, some uh, Arthur Miller too. Sure. Great. Um, um, for novels, uh, I like uh, Neil Gaiman's work a lot. Of course, yes. Uh, so uh, that's it. Oh yes, um, I have, and and she's only written like I think two books, and she, every book um, she spends ten years on a book. So uh- the next one is not going to be for a long time. But uh, Madeline Miller, the Circe book, and Song of Achilles oh. okay. were absolutely wonderful. Uh, just incredibly good. So, yeah, that's what I've been reading recently. And, okay. Uh, yeah. So, as you can see, my tastes are pretty, you know, diverse. Yes, absolutely. No, and good taste as as well. I think great. Uh, you're you're following great writers. That's terrific. Um, do you see yourself eventually? And or, and forgive me if you've already done this, but are you? Have you written and drawn your stories? Yeah, I've co-written. Um, sure. When Pierrick, uh, my partner, and I work together, we try as much as possible to to write together. Okay. I'm and not obviously- interested in in drawing and write and, and write alone. That's no, uh, you're not. Okay. No, um, I. What I like about co-writing is that I I feel like we can translate the script into picture pretty early in the process. You know, uh, yes. We figure out how the page work. Mm-hmm. I like. Um, having a part of it because I know how I can translate that into storytelling. But just the process of writing the story is not as appealing to me. Okay, I understand. And and I've heard other artists say the same thing. And mm-hmm. and and you're controlling. Well, I should ask. And and specifically talking about November. Um, well, first, how did you meet Matt? Tell me how you met Matt Fraction. I met Matt the same weekend I met Jimmy and Amanda. It's a, okay. It was a, yeah. Uh, so Matt and Kelly Sue, his uh, writer uh, wife. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, were in uh, Paris Comic Con. Uh, I think it was four years ago. So we okay. met then, and and w- we spent a lot of time together during the weekend, and I, we liked each other. We had fun and. Uh, over the course of the next few years, we went to their house for a bit and, you know, became friends. Sure. And um, after the Wasp, I think it was, maybe maybe it was 
after that, but around that time, I realized that I wanted to do something different. I had tried DC and Marvel. I had fun. Um, but I felt that maybe it wasn't what I would see myself doing for the next few years. Mm-hmm. So I just uh, asked Matt. Um, although he was a lot more famous than I than I am. Um, <laughs> and, you know, uh, uh, far more advanced in his career than I was. Um, but still, what the hell? Worst case scenario, Absolutely. he says no. <laughs> and he didn't. He said yes. And... Uh, and he wrote something, and it was wonderful, and I drew it, and we're very proud of it. Absolutely. No, it turned out incredible. And I think knowing the other artists that Matt has collaborated with over the years, I think he looks for non-traditional artists. And I love you know, his work with David Aja and, uh, mm-hmm. of course, um, oh shit, uh, Chip Zdarsky with Sex Criminals, I think is – really interesting and not not typical of of dc and marvel style of of that are you um what is, what is your feeling about uh superheroes are you i mean obviously you did the wasp and you did other dc and marvel work and mm-hmm. i assume that was all superhero stuff but yeah and any i mean are they just okay it's just another you know uh, story you know genre or what do what do you think of it um it I can appreciate good good superhero story because as a story, you know. Um, yes. But the superhero genre in itself is not something I feel very attracted to. Understood. I, I had a lot of fun on Wasp mm-hmm. um, because the characters were great and storytelling wise, I could do some interesting stuff. But you know. Um, right now and Starfire was great because it was Jimmy and Amanda and um but now that I have a few years experience I can see um what I prefer to do Mm -hmm. and what I want to put my energy into and create our own uh, books is something I feel closer to probably also because I didn't grow up reading comics so I don't have that you know uh that attachment that that stems from childhood, you know? Sure. Absolutely. Well, that, you, know, and, you go sorry, ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. You continue. You're, you're the guest. You, you continue your <laughs> thought, please. Um, so there's that. And also um, I, I put a lot of importance into owning or co-owning my own characters. Yes. Which is something that you can do when you, when you work for DC or Marvel. Right. And I think that's great. They pay their artists well. You can make a good living when you um, work uh, with them. Mm-hmm. Um, but given the choice, I'd rather earn less and do what I want. You know. Sure. No, that's great. I Again, I envy European comics because uh, I believe the comic readers are used to non-superhero stories and they can explore different genres and as i you're right growing up in uh the united states certainly a lot of my comics were funny comics and also superheroes but as i've gotten older i've appreciated the format and i'm glad that i've my taste has kind of expanded and now i i mean i love a good crime story and i think november is very uh, representative of that genre in in the best ways, um, and yeah, I I really I, and I seek out a lot of uh, bidet. Am I saying it right? The Belgian comics and the Franco comics and everything. Yeah. There you go. So yeah, I I look. I always try to find uh, yeah other other genres, but uh, I have to say that I am a I'm a big crime fan. So uh, yeah, like I said, when I when I heard about the, what you and Matt were doing. I was definitely very excited. Have you um, have you finished volume two? I know it's a three volume story. Am I correct? It's go- it, 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 at first, but it's gonna be four volumes. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More fun for me. You sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> I finished. We finished. Sorry, and I want also to, um, give credit to Matt Hollingsworth, who's doing the yes. colors, yeah. and Kurt and Kenny, who is. Um, is lettering the okay, book. Okay, great. Yes. Uh, hand lettering the book. Um, oh, so um, 
what was I saying? Um, the volumes. And yeah. Yes, sorry. And I'm I'm halfway through volume three right now. That's terrific. Okay. Yeah. When, when I, am I right? Because I follow you on Twitter. So are you starting to like? Is volume two? When when does volume two come out? May twenty. Oh, great. Yeah. Very good. Well, then, yeah. and terrific. So I think the way the American uh, store system works. They would order it uh, two months before. So, yeah, coming up in March, people can order volume two. Uh, yes, that's it. Okay. And are, there's, are, are you crowdfunding Kickstarter or anything like that with these books? Or are you – you've obviously you – know, I know you're publishing through Image. And I know Matt obviously has a great relationship with Image. Um, yeah, I mean there was, was there any other uh, patron backing by readers – prior to getting your publishing deal? Um, no, it's okay. it's been pretty classic. Uh, sure. We pitched it to Image. And obviously, I mean, with Matt, I mean, track record in terms yes. of, you know, books. Um, yeah. They, 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 um, they published it, and that's pretty much um, it. Yeah. Okay. No, that's great. I, uh, I like the shifting narrative not only between the characters, but it seems like a little bit time as well. Am I correct? Oh yes, you are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's something that I find really interesting in Matt's work in general, but specifically on this one, he made a conscious conscious choice. Sorry, to um, to include time and um, timelines. You know, past, future. Yes. Um, uh, into the story. Yes. No, it makes the mystery more interesting. And uh, yeah, again, and and I'm glad you mentioned, I was going to get to uh, Matt Hollingsworth with his coloring and your letterer as well, because it really, again, it's a very distinct look. And um, yeah, I, again, I, I think it really fits uh, the, the crime and noir genre, in my opinion. So and do you... You go ahead. No, please give it. You no, know, no. Yeah, I just wanted to, to um, refer back to what you said about Matt's coloring and all. Is um, what make makes this story understandable is the colors. There's been a, a huge work on his part to color code the the different times of the story and the different characters mm -hmm. uh, that just makes. The whole sense, the the whole thing, um, readable, <laughs> you know. Yes. Without colors, there's no way you can understand that story. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. Okay, that's very interesting. Um, so, did you um, tell me about uh, the the story idea? Did it did it come from both of you, you and Matt uh, Fraction? No, no, it's all him. Uh, okay. It, it stemmed for. From a, a bad experience that he had uh, ten years ago, uh, there was a car hijacking, violent uh, one in front of his house, and uh, a couple of a few hours after the events, he found a gun. Wow! I didn't know a that. Few, I'm going few, to have a few yeah. yards from you know his kids. Oh my God! Yeah, was this when and, he was living in Kansas City? I don't know. Uh, I don't know exactly. And okay. I don't know if the the gun was loaded. It might have been. I don't. Know. But it wow. was terrifying. And sure. he, you know, it ma it makes you think. You know, you're living your life. You know, you're regular people, regular sure. non criminal people. You don't yes. think that you're gonna have, uh, you know, um, a, a, a facing violence uh, or potential violence. Uh, that way in your own front yard. So, yes. And that's what he does in this story. He just throws these characters that are just, you know, you and me people. Yes, ordinary <laughs> and, people, absolutely. And he throws them into this stories of people who are not that you and me people, who are criminals and who <laughs> are uh, yes. malevolent. Yes. And that's how, and that's something that Matt does so well um just puts you into that person's shoes for a bit you know absolutely no and i like 
all three characters, D and uh, it, 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 I want to say Kowalski, the uh, dispatcher from uh, 9-11. Yeah, so they're, the three characters are D, K, and M. Okay, there we go. Uh, D, K, and M. Okay, very good. Yes. And um, no, and I know their three stories will lock more together as the story progresses. Oh, definitely. Uh, volume 2 um, gives a lot of answers and connects what we've uh, established in Volume 1. That's great. Um, well, again, it, it, it really... Um, excited me and I enjoyed it and you know in the best way I really it's a it's a great a unique story and uh, I'm I'm thrilled with uh, your storytelling and uh, your art style are you going to come to um, um, the states and do any conventions uh, to promote the book um, I will be in Los Angeles in April okay during the WannaCon weekend but I won't be a WannaCon uh, I see. I'll be around that time. I'm. I'm. I will try to do a couple of uh, store signings. Sure. In so I yeah. don't know exactly yet which store or what, but I'll know that for sure uh, as we get closer to it. And I will probably do New York Comic Con. Hey, terrific! I hope to see you at New York. I plan on. Yeah. I plan on being in New York as well. Um, that's terrific. That's great to hear. Uh, yeah, and also I do understand. I mean, obviously, you know, travel isn't cheap, and I and I do I do know how hard it is uh, to get <laughs> over here for for international artists. I have I have friends from Brazil and Spain and and other countries, and and certainly England. And it is you know as as commonplace as it is for us to travel around the states and and get to different shows. Do you what uh, are, will you be doing European shows uh, this year to promote November? Mm. Uh, not shows, but I, I'll, um, I'm starting a mini tour of stores. Okay. Terrific. That's great. Have you, what is the comparison to French comic stores compared to what you've seen in the States? Is there so, a comparison? Um, so I go to comic book stores mm -hmm. because I, I sign my book in English because it's not uh, available <laughs> in France for now. So oh, it's basically okay. just a comic book store, as you would find in the States. Sure. Uh, but the, the, the stores, the bookstores that we have for Frank, Franco-Belgium, you know, Bande mm -hmm. Yeah, Bidet, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, are, yeah, um, they, they feel to me more like bookstores, you know? Yes. The, of it yes uh, but other than that pretty much similar yeah okay and and you have not found a, a french publisher yet for november uh i think it's in process i oh good seen... yeah hopefully i think probably yes <laughs> is is your work known to the franco-belgian comic book world not at all okay <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, too, it's very it's two different um, things, and uh, for a long time, that might be different now because of all the movies and stuff, but uh, for a long time, you know, uh, French uh, BD turned turned up its nose to comics. Um, okay, interesting. Yeah, um, but I really don't care, you know? <laughs> no! <laughs> it's, it's fine, they want to... I'm fine with it. I I don't work in France at all. I I like there are comic book fans in France, mm -hmm. uh, but that's pretty much the only time that I get to you know uh, talk with uh, shop owners. It's for comic book stuff because I've never published anything in French. Interesting. Wow. Or and, and, my books have been translated into French, but I have never worked, you know, with the publisher in France. I understand. Okay. Um, and am I right? Are you based in France or are you based somewhere else in Europe? I'm in France. You are in France. Okay. I wanted, I wanted to confirm that. All right. Very good. Um, well, they're in for a surprise when, uh, when <laughs> I hope, I hope everything works out and they, they, uh, recognize uh, November because it really is it's a, it's a beautiful book it's a great start 
to the story. And I think very intriguing in the best ways of this mystery of these three people. Absolutely. And, uh, no, I'm 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 very excited to uh, see volume two and where the story leads, and um, yeah, I, I you know you're and and I should say that in the future, um, if you would like to promote your your works, uh, I hope you'll come back and we can talk more. And and even as the story progresses, um, I don't know what a good natural point if after each, uh, you know, even in May after volume two comes out, if there's you know, if it's a good time story, you know, as far as talking about the story more, I'm happy to uh, help promote it for, for you and Matt. And, uh, yeah, get to, you know, absolutely. Oh, it'd um, be my pleasure. I, I do have something else. That Please I tell us. Yes. Right now. Um, Very good. I did a, a Kickstarter campaign in uh, November to put out an art book. And, I see. Uh, the campaign did really well, <laughs> a lot better than I was than I was expecting. We did like sixty thousand dollars worth of of the orders. That's terrific! Congratulations, that's wonderful. So, and that that's out now. Uh, I we did the shipping for all the backers. That's done. So the book is officially out February twenty sixth. Oh, that's so, wonderful. Hey, that's great. Yeah. This, uh, uh, as we're recording, it came out today. That's wonderful. I yes. thought I thought when I saw your Twitter account that you were doing some sort of Kickstarter campaign, and I assumed it was November, but instead it's your art book. What is the yeah. title of your art book? It's uh, my name and then volume one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> so, Which I guess now I uh, will have to do volume two at some point. Otherwise, Absolutely. It makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. It was a lot of fun. Um, I was very surprised by the amount of support that I got uh, during this campaign and how many people pre-order it was insane. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's been an um, interesting and very different experience than, you know, just working on your pages and, and, th- and then turn them in. Sure. Um, our first book, The Infinite Loop, was confronted, crowdfunding, sorry, in France uh, five okay. or six years ago. Okay. So I, I I had an experience with crowdfunding, but this was this one was uh, definitely a larger scale. That's terrific. But, Go yeah. on. Yeah. That no, um so so um the people that uh, backed your Kickstarter, obviously, mm-hmm. like you said, you've been shipping the book to them, but now people can also purchase it um on their own um get, get, wh- how would they purchase your art book i have an etsy store sure uh, uh in which i have two items the art book and november <laughs> i Terrific. used to sell a lot of more a lot more stuff on there are the prints and things um but right now there's the, the art book in november Wonderful. That's great. And and is it is your Etsy store? Is it under your name or does it have its own name? It's under my name. You just Google my name, Elsa Chartier, and then Etsy, and then you'll find it. <laughs> That's great. That's fantastic. And um, um, for people who I I started doing that because a lot of a lot of people asked me, oh, can I get a sketch and stuff? So uh, what I do if that if you get the art book plus a November copy, both on my stores, I sketch a little thing inside. Oh, that's wonderful. That's yeah. terrific. So, you know, I know um, uh, European shows, as I've understood it, a lot of uh, fans expect a free sketch. And I know mm-hmm. in, 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 <laughs> in the States, we, we, are, we are prepared to pay for, uh, for our sketches. And uh, yeah, have you have you done both at, at European shows and, and uh, American shows? Um, the shows that I do are comic book shows. So French fans know uh, that that's how it goes. You pay for your sketches. Sure. And, and they most oh, of good. them are happy to do it. But the French uh, BD fans have not been properly, you know, educated. <laughs> In that regard, they expect uh, a full watercolor oh my God. <laughs> uh, sketch for free. Wow. Uh, and that's insane to me. And of course. artists, I've complained, you know, because that means that 
artists will spend a weekend away from their family to essentially make zero money yeah, off that's the show. Not fair. No, and that the only reason fair. that most of them do shows are, one, to meet editors. Uh, there are no editors in French at French shows. Okay. So that's, yeah. And to make a bit of money. And French comic book artists or French BD artists can't mm -hmm. do that. And that's wow. ridiculous, you know? It is ridiculous. Absol I completely uh, agree. That's ridiculous. So no, you're right. What the, what this, what the, you know, shows have worked with the artists and is that artists are paid yes. to do their shows and to sketch for free. Oh, I see. I that's see. That's better. Sure. It's, it's way, 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 way lower than just uh, charging for sketches. I understand. No, I totally understand. And um, I've always refused um, sketching for free. Because, sure. You know, and, and I've never had to have that conversation with American fans. And also, the only time I've offered to do it for free, people will say, no, I appreciate the time that you put into it. I enjoy your work. I want to support you. So yes. I have to give you $50, you know. And That's that wonderful. Means, that means so much. Sure. That, you know, people don't don't take you for granted in, in in the states, and that's that has a lot of you know value besides the money value. <laughs> no, I understand. <laughs> Which yes, is nice. we respect we respect your the effort that you put in, uh, the work that you put in to create yeah. something beautiful. Absolutely, and yeah, then again, that, that, that goes to showing that fans in the states. Um, I appreciate artists a lot more than oh, yeah. in France. Oh no, I, 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 my, the room I'm speaking to you from has many uh, commissioned sketches from many creators that I'm, I've been friends with over the years. And of course, no, you want to, you know, yes, you want to support and appreciate the work they do because, as you say, no, it's not like something you can just draw in, you know, uh, five minutes or, or 10 minutes or something. I mean, you're, you're putting a real effort into it. So, uh, and that's good to hear. And I'm glad that, uh, your fans are, are supporting you and appreciating the, the work you put in. And of course the final, uh, production after it's completed. That's great. Yeah. And you know, I remember at one of my first shows, I did a sketch for someone. I can't remember. Uh, but I remember, it probably not being very good because it was one of my early shows. Okay. And then I said, okay, uh, okay, it's fifty dollars. And the guy looked at it and then, no, he's a hundred. <laughs> How and much it, more? A hundred dollars. Like wow, price, that's really but it was nice. Charging, and I was baffled. Like what? <laughs> like you're starting out. I'm here to like support you if I can. And I was like, oh my god, this would never happen in France. That's terrific. You know, that's great. You know, and I, and I, and I do understand because I've met uh, similar fans as well. And, and yeah, they, they, uh, well, they appreciate the journey of your art and your evolution and they want to, mm. yeah, they want to support you and, and cheer you on to, to continue to create and get better. So that's, that's terrific to hear. That's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. And I, and I also know that talking to, other European creators that slowly they're trying to change the culture and, and mm -hmm. make people realize that there's work behind this stuff. And it isn't just something, a doodle that you can just, you know, whip off really fast and, and yeah. do. So, yeah, absolutely. No, that's, that's amazing. Um, I, you know, have you done Angoulême? <laughs> it's a touchy, touchy oh. subject. Yes. I've done it once. <laughs> I'm and sorry. I absolutely hated that show. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really didn't like it, but um, okay. it was very cold. Yes, I had a, a shitty hotel, <laughs> so maybe <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't under the best circumstances. I maybe will try again. <laughs> I um, there's an American artist, Alex Ross. Yeah, and my friend uh, Sal Abenati represents him and he goes to he used to go to Angoulême he goes to Luca in Italy a lot and uh and he has told he has told me similar stories and like you said the fact that Angoulême happens 
at the beginning of the year when it's still winter. The worst it's, time. Yeah. <laughs> what if you do a show, an outside show, because everything's supposed to be outside in fucking January? Yes. My God. No, I. I'm sorry. You know, I swear. Oh no no no! It's to- no. I, I pre- that's okay. You speak your mind. That's very good, and it's you don't have to worry about swearing on my program. It's quite <laughs> all right. Um, and and no, I, it's you know I'll tell you our show is indoors, but this weekend in Chicago, uh, it's the earliest they've ever done C two E two, and all of us who live in Chicago, we feel bad for the people coming from out of town, and are all you know we're like, why would you? We don't want to be here at the end of. <laughs> When it's incredibly cold in Chicago, it's like, yeah. I don't blame you for, you know, it's if you're not going to the Chicago convention this year, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, like I said, it's, it's not the best weather. And yeah, it's, uh, we, it's, it's better when it's in the spring and Chicago is prettier in the spring. So, yeah, yeah, well, you know, I was in Chicago in April and it snowed. So, <laughs> oh, well, then that's true. Too. <laughs> that's true. Too. So, maybe we don't have the same idea of what spring is supposed to be, <laughs> but maybe it doesn't include snow. <laughs> yes, no, you're right about that. And sometimes it is late into the spring and even sometimes in the summer before we really get warm weather here in Chicago. I do understand. <laughs> so, our falls are nice, it's our a beautiful autumns city, are nice. though. Oh, I appreciate it. That's great to hear. And um, were you at Quimby's or what stores were you at in Chicago? I was um, at Star Wars Celebration. Oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, that's great. Jeez. Yep. I was, uh, I had a little medical problem and I missed it. I could have gone to Star Wars, but uh, I was still recovering from a, a medical issue last year. So I was able to be there. That's great. I, did you. Were you there just as a? Were you there as an artist? Were you were you selling things at, at Star Wars Celebration? <clears throat> no, I, um, I I essentially went for fun and Good. did a couple of panels, but okay. it was mainly just an excuse to go to the, to a Star Wars show and visit Chicago. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. What did you think of uh, What did you think of the new movies? I liked them. That's okay. <laughs> There's no wrong answer to that question. That's yeah, fine. I'm always like, should I, should I, should I say that? <laughs> sure, um, no, I, it's okay. I haven't seen the latest one though. Uh, okay. Yes. The last I, one. Yeah. I know it's it's ridiculous. It's been out a few months, but uh, I had a lot of work around that time, and um, and I didn't get a chance to to go see it. Okay. No, no, we all get busy. I haven't. It's. I'm gonna uh, talk to Jimmy and Amanda. On on Saturday, and I have to try to get uh, to watch Birds of Prey, the Harley Quinn movie, before mm-hmm. I speak to them. I know they didn't make it, but you know they're they're so involved with the character yeah. that uh, yeah, I, I feel like I, I'm obligated to uh, to see it before I speak to them. Um, so I understand. I uh, no, and again, we all get busy. I only saw the last Spider Man movie last month, and that came out last summer. For gosh sakes, so no. <laughs> It's okay. No, no. <laughs> but no, this has been great. I, I truly appreciate you talking to me today and also taking time out of your day to speak to me. And uh, also, thank you for understanding the time difference. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so, I, I, I freaked out a little when I saw your call. I was like, oh, man, I'm late. No, no, don't worry. No, no. It's, you know, like I said, it's late morning, early afternoon. I, I'm I'm fine. I, I Like I told you, I worked last night, so... Uh, no, I, my, my plan was to speak with you and it's, it's totally fine. So thank you. And, uh, thank no, you, thank you so much. And congratulations on November. It's a beautiful book and we're looking forward to volume two coming out in May from image yep. <laughs> and, uh, and then yeah, the next two volumes after that. So it's, it was a pleasure to meet you and I hope we speak again in the future. Thank you so much for taking an interest in my work and in, in November, I appreciate it. And it was really nice talking to you. There we go. Elsa Chartier, really great conversation and uh, a new interesting creator to stay aware of. Of course, new to me. She's been around for a while, but I've uh, appreciated her work. I'm telling you, November is just stunning, and it's very interesting storytelling. Uh, You should definitely, if you haven't already jumped on board, uh, pick up the uh, Volume 1 and Volume 2 coming up in uh, just a month or two, and two more volumes to go after that. A very, very interesting story from Elsa Chartier and Mac Fraction, and I'm happy to help uh, support the product and let everybody know about this great crime story. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Word Balloon. Again, brought to you by the League of Word Balloon listeners. League, I'm telling you, man, you got my back. 
I'm trying to do the same by giving you some great uh, product and podcasting uh, throughout these weeks and uh, trying times. Don't worry, Word Balloon is here to entertain you, and the league is here to help me by subscribing to Word Balloon and sponsoring me. Thank you greatly for your Patreon support. Patreon.com slash Word Balloon, or click on the Patreon ad on the front page of WordBalloon.com. But I can't thank you enough, League of Word Balloon listeners. I also can't thank Aftershock Comics enough, because uh, they are not only uh, helping me out by sponsoring Word Balloon, but they are entertaining the hell out of me with a lot of their titles, and continue to as well. Things like uh, Dark Ark from uh, Cullen Bunn and Juan Doe and Dark Red from Tim Seeley and uh, Baby Teeth from Donnie Cates and Gary Brown and A Walk Through Hell from Garth Ennis and Gordon Suzuka. A lot of great Garth Ennis product from Aftershock. Animosity from Marguerite Bennett and Raphael De La Tour. Uh, also God Killers by Mark Sable, one of the brand new books. Zach Thompson's Undone by Blood and Stephanie Phillips' Artemis and the Assassins. It's debuting this month, and man, I cannot wait to to catch up with Stephanie to talk about that and a whole bunch of other projects that she's been working on lately. Also, John Layman's The Man Who Effed Up Time started last month, and that's a terrific book to jump onto. You know, we're all loving our books from the big two, but uh, again, I think we need uh, more things to distract us as we're stuck inside. I can't recommend enough a lot of the books from Aftershock Comics. You've got to go to their website. I am sure you will find a book that will interest and entertain you. Check them out. Go to their website. You'll find full story descriptions, preview pages, and the way to get these stories digitally or through the diamond codes in your local shop at AftershockComics.com. Thanks again for listening. More great episodes coming up in the days and weeks ahead. I am really going to uh, amp up uh, the output of Word Balloon. I've got... uh, Got him. All right, I'm just going to count because I, I don't like to uh, name names until uh, they're already, you know, done and in the box. But I've got, uh, let's see, today, t- two tomorrow, uh, one tonight as I'm recording, one Wednesday and one Thursday. So that's five. Five uh, episodes of Word Balloon I'm planning on recording this week, along with our Star Trek Picard reviews that I do with Franco and uh, some other uh, interesting uh, wrinkles to Word Balloon in the days and weeks ahead to further entertain you beyond just a good interview. I hope you'll join me and uh, enjoy these conversations that are coming up. Until next time, Word Balloon is a copyright feature of Shaky Productions, copyright 2020. Everybody stay healthy out there. <laughs>